The Hanami H1 has a massive headrest, a footrest, an all mesh design, and it comes in for just around $600, making it one of the most asked about chairs on our channel in quite a while. This may be the unicorn that mesh chair shoppers are looking for. But before we jump into this first impressions, I wanna share with you our office chair cheat sheet we've created after testing hundreds of chairs. Just click the link in the description. The first thing that I noticed on the H1 is that it is a substantial chair. The chair is heavy, the components feel solid, and overall, it feels like it's well put together. It also has a nice look to it. It doesn't look cheap or gimmicky. I was pleasantly surprised with the build and aesthetics of the H1. The next thing that caught my attention were the arms. Because of the cantilever design, I was really hoping they were going to be like the Steelcase Gesture arms, and we were going to see an amazing arm package on this $600 chair. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Hanami didn't take advantage fully of the cantilever design and made something much more cumbersome. The beautiful thing about the gesture is that you click one button and the arms can move almost anywhere. With the H1 Pro, you not only don't get the range you might expect, but the arms are more difficult to adjust. They're like the Aeron arms, where you have to release a lever, move the arms, and then lock the lever again. The height range is also limited on the low end, so I have a tough time using these arms comfortably because the arms don't go low enough to use without me having my shoulders pushed up. The pads themselves have adjustable arm caps, which does help a ton, but the pads are not very soft. They also have a little slick design and they're sloped, so I find my arms sliding off the sides quite a bit. One thing about the cantilever design is that it does set it apart a little bit because they flip up. This can be useful for people that need to use their chair with the arms out of the way, like playing the guitar. For my initial testing, the backrest seems to be the strongest part of the chair. It has a split design, copying the Ergo Human, but Hanami took it a step further and made the lower lumbar support adjustable. This allows you to really crank up that lumbar support, and you can feel a massive difference when making these adjustments. The height adjustment also ensures that you get it positioned properly to give you the support that you need. The mesh is similar quality to the Asus Destrier. It has good elasticity and is comfortable to the touch. My one complaint with the back is that it doesn't really support my upper back and shoulders unless I'm reclining in the chair. I use my chair straight up and down, much more so than reclined, so this is a pretty big problem for me. The recline is very good though. It has a smooth motion, is easy to use, and has a good range. It has a few locking positions and a tension adjustment that clicks into each new position instead of having an infinitely adjustable knob that takes tons of turns to do anything. While the backrest appears to be the strongest part of the H1, the seat may be the weakest. Full transparency here, I don't love mesh seats, but this one in particular is pretty uncomfortable for me. There are two things that I don't like about it. The first is that the mesh isn't firm enough. I sink too far into it. The problem with this is that it increases the pressure on one specific area, and for me, that ends up being my tailbone. The second thing I don't like is that the plastic frame is really pronounced. It feels similar to a gaming chair because you're confined to a much smaller space than the dimensions would suggest. Again, I don't like mesh seats as much as padded models, but this seat becomes tough to sit in once I reach the two hour mark. The headrest is quite good on the H1. I like that it's really large. You don't need to worry about hitting an uncomfortable frame and you can move your head around as much as you want, much more freely than most headrests will allow. It also has good adjustments and works in a dual function mode. You're able to use one portion of the headrest when sitting upright, but then you can adjust it and use a different portion of the headrest so that it lines up with the backrest, making it much better for reclining and relaxing. The footrest was one thing I was really excited to try out, just because we've had models in the past with footrests and they've all been terrible. The H1 isn't terrible. It has a large enough adjustment range to support my feet and calves, whereas most chairs that have footrests feel way too small and don't support you properly. When reclined all the way back, it is actually pretty comfortable and adds a nice new dynamic to the chair, which makes it much better for relaxing at home. One major downside to it though, is that you do need to lock the chair in order to use it properly. The weight of the chair isn't balanced in a way that allows you to have your feet on the footrest and recline back. The weight of your legs and feet just pulls you forward. But once locked, it is comfortable. 
One other downside that I didn't really expect is that when you're not using it, it does fold away, but because it doesn't get completely under the seat, you do make contact with it with your legs if you are one of those people that likes to bring your legs back under your chair and potentially prop them up on your chair base. Finding the best chair in the $600 range isn't easy. Maybe the H1 is your perfect chair. If you still need some help though, check out our office chair cheat sheet we've created after testing hundreds of chairs. Just click the link in the description.